Wikipedia yesterday, because Mr. Thomas points out frequently to me that all of my cultural race references, not just in this context, tend to come from the 80s. But there was a TV show that was made in Japan in the 80s, in the late 70s, in the 80s, called Monkey, stroke Monkey Magic, which was a fantastic story about this monkey god who went on this epic quest to, um, from China to India with a Buddhist monk and his two friends who were... The Monkey King, that's not a magic monkey. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but they made a TV show. They made a TV show. It was, it was, show. Monkey it, it was excellent. <laughs> is that the orange monkey? I remember it. And, uh, and when, like whenever, I'm talking about, yeah. whenever I'm talking about Winged Monkey, this is the image I have in mind. But unfortunately, it was never televised in the US, I gather. So you guys don't have a clue what I'm looking for. That's, that's not important. Yeah, yeah. Well, clever, monkey. It means that a whole load of cultural references about uh, we, we could make, but it wouldn't be in. Yes. Oh my god. I <laughs> there there, there you go. Halloween once, when I, was a kid. I, 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 I advise you to yeah, I remember. watch the, the show because it was absolutely fantastic and possessed all <coughs> the defining characteristics of excellence. But that's not the point. Of so, the whole slew of references that are not going to work. We'll skip that. So, in order to, for what I'm about to say to make sense, it all kind of comes together, there are a couple of things you need to bear in mind. One is this whole business of personas, because Winged Monkey is an instance where we are specifically targeting, targeting one of the personas, and not the others. And, and if you bear in mind that we're only really trying to hit the use case of one of these personas here, it will hopefully make quite a bit more sense. And then the other, the other underlying idea behind this the winged monkey thing is this whole idea that Hume talked about on Monday, that if we can find a way to modularize and split up where it makes sense, some of what the EOS project contains, we can end up with a bunch of things which are standalone useful things which could be viable upstream in themselves. And because they do, because they do one thing, they're quite easy to approach and to re-implement, to use on a different project, to contribute to, all that stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that in order to reopen the discussion about whether that's the right goal, but th that goal's already been described, and this kind of aligns with that. And hopefully, uh, like I say, bearing those th things in mind will make what I'm about to go through make a bit more sense. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, caveats. This is a new idea. And it's not that no work has happened on it, but not a lot has happened on it. And um, there's a lot that I'm going to talk about that isn't absolutely set and determined and has to be the way that I'm going to lay it out. Um, like all of our stuff, we're going to make this into an upstream project, a sub project. And it will go the way that the conversations on the list and the, the way that the patch is taken. So what I'm going to tell you, there's an element to what I'm going to say, what I reckon about what this thing's going to turn into. But what it actually turns into specifically is going to come down to who does the coding and what the patches that they end up putting on the list actually do. So um, don't get too hung up on any sort of minor details. Say, well, you know, Angus says it's going to have this feature, which is because you know, it, it, it's all projection at this point. So, we are talking about a standalone application which provides a nice, simple UI in front of a provider and lets a particular class of user, uh, the self-service consumers who just want to be able to see what they can launch and get it launched, do that across multiple underlying providers. Now, I'm going to talk. Just, they just quick note, these are users using their own credentials for their own accounts and providers? Yes. So, I, I, I'll come on to that in more okay. detail. Can, can yes for that one. Yeah. So, <coughs> it is intended that it is a, 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 a simple application which has a simple UI, which only does a very specific subset of things, which are the core things that a, a self-service user, which is one of the personas we talked about pre, needs to do, and can do that across multiple back ends. The theory is, 
that if you abstract out the concept of stop picking a thing to launch and launch it and stop it again sufficiently, you can you can represent that consistently, irrespective of what the underlying provider is. But I'll, I'll get into that more in more detail. It is effectively the user portal that Andy Smith was talking about. Uh, in his conversation about consumers of cloud engine, he talked about one organization which have re-implemented their own user portal uh, with help, and another organization which desperately wants a user portal. This is basically that thing, we believe. <clears throat> so, there are some guidelines, fundamental kind of rules-ish, that we tried to lay down to, to drive the discussion of exactly what Wink Monkey is going to be and how it's going to get the first is that we are going to focus on ease of use and aesthetics. In order that people want to use this thing rather than the native interface for whatever provider you might be connecting to, it has to be actually superior. And I believe, and I'll show you some mock-ups in a minute, I believe that it can be superior by having a very specific focus, by getting <coughs> people pick from a catalogue of stuff that they can launch, launch stuff, see what's running, and stop it again, broadly, and optimising the user experience and the visuals. This is where our friends in the UX, the uh, uh, team, and um, Yaramir and Jeremy Perry, and a lot of people are already working on this, this, this user experience challenge. But the thinking is, if we really pare down the scope of what it does, we can make it do that thing really nice. And that's important. You know, it has to be intuitive and simple and nice to use. Some of the personas we were talking about yesterday, these are a class of people who don't care about the cloud and just want to get a thing done. So the, the financial analyst who needs a computer engine, or the, the, uh, you know, the animator who just needs a, a render, render cluster for a short time or whatever, they're, they're not interested in the cloud, they, but they want a simple, easy, attractive interface. So one of the most important things is making it simple and easy and aesthetically pleasing and intuitive, and spending more time on making the UI right for a small set of use cases than we've done typically in the past. And doing a small number of things well, as I said. Now, that largely in italics is an instance of me caveating because we haven't actually implemented this thing, we'll see how we get on. But the principle is that rather than being a complex application in itself, which holds a whole load of state and has a complex model and all that stuff, Wings Monkey will basically represent what is exported by the underlying APIs of whatever the, the underlying provider is. Uh, in the same way that uh, Horizon does, broadly speaking, in the, um, in the OpenStack project. If we do it right, it doesn't have to be a hugely complex app in itself, because it is, it's giving an interface to the underlying capabilities of the provider that it's representing to the, the self-service user. And actually, that largely is only there because we haven't actually solved any, any or all of the problems that are associated with making that work yet. Um, the other fundamental principle that we have kind of gravitated towards and has been discussed on the list, we've gone around several times, is we're only going to show the capabilities that the provider natively supports. So, I mean, all providers let you see the stuff which your credentials let up could conceivably let you launch, and all providers let you launch a thing, and all providers let you stop. So we, we're, we're fairly solid on the core mission of this thing. But there are all kinds of fancy bells and whistles, some of which I will get onto specifically in a minute, which some providers provide and some providers don't. And what we are saying in that case is that if the underlying provider doesn't have a feature, it's not going to turn up in the UI when Winged Monkey is connected to that provider. The danger, if we didn't follow that principle, there's a bunch of dangers. One is enormous fucking... One, one is enormous... <laughs> <laughs> the problem with working at home for two years, I find, is you become extremely disinhibited. <laughs> Any time I'm working in an office, I realise that. Anyway. Are you comfortable? You want to take your trousers off? Look, <laughs> 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 camera, camera. So, enormous features creep. If we didn't draw some lines, this thing would just grow out in all directions. There's a ton of things you could conceivably do, and we've got to nail it down and contain this. 
So, specifically, it is not going to do account multiplexing like conductor does, because going back to your point about credentials as well. Yeah. We very cleverly have a system with, with users and user groups and permissions and, and all of that stuff, whereby there are some EC2 <coughs> credentials, say, but the user doesn't know what those secrets are and gets to use them in a limited contained way, despite that fact. Winged Monkey is not going to reproduce that capability. So it's, but it's going to be more of a passing through of credentials which actually have a meaning to the underlying provider. Um, we're not going to do cloud brokering and picking which is the right place for this thing to run. Winged Monkey will, pick, will connect to a provider. That almost sounds like you could say that Winged Monkey is more you know, Delta Cloud enhanced than it is Conductor Lite. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. Kind of That's UI true. visibility on top. Yeah. And so, by putting a you know a firm set of boundaries around what this thing is, that is the means by which we are going to ensure, touch wood, I already did carry up, didn't I? That we're going to ensure that this doesn't turn into con you know conductor again done by degrees. It has a specific mission and it's going to do that, and then we're going to get it to stop. It all sounds really nice and like Excellent. a really good thing, except for what you just said about the no account multiplexing, which would be a complete killer for the people that need uh, exactly this beautiful thing, well, but need the account yeah. multiplexing. Well, fortunately, we've got we've got conductor for those people. Yeah, yeah, but it, but, but the people that have asked for no. you know, a portal for conductor, this isn't that, is it? Yeah, yeah but, but because but it's the, the use case of people that want a user portal, you know, yeah. and want to have a, you know, 50 people in their department just going through this user portal. With an account multiplexing, I mean that's, that's unless that you could, unless you is why we need an API on conductor. Yeah. And then we can use conductor as one of its writers. Exactly. But in, the, in that scenario, those people need to be using conductor as the underlying provider. Though. So yeah, exactly. So in, in my head so far, this one thing I didn't get is I'm thinking this is going to be using the conductor API in the background, but not presenting the conductor interface. No, no. But, I, okay. I I have I, I don't get stuff out of order. Otherwise, I end up looking blank. <laughs> One of the potential underlying <coughs> devices that Winged Monkey could connect to is Conductor. And, you know, this point here, if the provider doesn't support it, the, the, the UI doesn't show it. Conductor is going to be the most excellent provider. Because when we build out the API, it's going to have the quotas, it's going to have the cost information, it's going to have all of this coolness that will show up in the Winged Monkey API. You point it straight at VMware. You won't get any of that. You'll get a list and a launch button and, and you know, enjoy that. But, yeah, it's, but what we're not going to do is compensate for the deficiency in a particular provider by re by stuff in here. Um, <laughs> so, multiple providers, exactly this point. The theory is that it will connect to one of, which is involved to remind me to make a point of this, one of these things, one of these underlying providers. Either an aggregating cloud management tool like Heat or Conductor or Delta Cloud, or directly speak natively to a provider. You could use it in that context. EC2? Is that on the list? That uh, list? That's probably an oversight on my part. Yes, that ought to be there. So, I mean, well, I mean, but this is all this is all speculative. Yeah. The question is, who's going to actually write this stuff and in what order? So, so, you, so if you want to talk to two different providers, you actually need two Winged Monkey instances? Yeah, the one person logged into one Winged Monkey instance connects to one provider and does their stuff. Otherwise, we get into this whole brokering thing and you end up trying to re-implement conductor. So no, one, you are a person logged in with some credentials connected to a single provider. And if that single provider is conductor, you've still got, you know, you still got the pool concept behind there. But as far as you're concerned, that's, that's the provider. Is it possible we'll do like Delta Cloud eventually did, which was to have one instance that you could pass in as part of a request, which provider you're talking to. And so you see only one in, in the UI, but it's actually one server that you could pass something in so that you don't have to bring up a bunch of instances of this thing because you have more than one provider. Um, you should use Conductor for that. You should, your provider should be Conductor. If you're using Conductor, sure. Well. If you, but if you want all the cleverness with the multi-provider... Oh, I, I don't mean cleverness with a multi-provider. I, I mean it's like Delta Cloud, where when you make a Delta Cloud request, there's one provider you're talking to, right. but you don't have to have multiple instances of the service running to talk to multiple providers. You put that in the request, and then everything... Well, yes. No. But, but, I mean, what we had thought about not was... Fun. If I'm remembering right, what we had thought about was 
having a config file or something in which a user could put their own credentials, thereby making it easy to switch back and forth between. Yeah. You know, yeah. or it could be pull down a selector and choose a provider. Now I'm talking to VMware. Choose a different provider. Now I'm talking to EC2. Yeah, so, or it right. could be a, a property of user account in WingMonkey yeah. that you have your uh, name and password, and with that account is associated some provider. Okay. And so, you have a different name and password, and yeah. with that account. Okay, so that's an, again another, another, another way of saying that from a from a workflow point of view, you're dealing with one provider, but that doesn't mean that you might not have the same actual service running that is handling multiple providers, but just not and only one at a time. Yeah, one, different, one, different one user. One or different. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Um, Which, as everyone will be able to understand, immediately makes the UI much simpler. Mm -hmm. sure. If you if you start out saying when you're connected to a provider, that's all you're connected to, full stop. Yeah. It makes that part of the UI design much simpler. And, and, and being simple and solving a specific limited set of problems is, is kind of the point here. You know? Otherwise, you could just expand in all kinds of the same direction. I'm, I'm just, sorry, I just like to clarify one thing then. Mm -hmm. um, so, is the idea that Winged Monkey as a service uh, is going to be connected to one provider, or is, it, is the idea that one user is going to be connected to one provider at a time, but different users of the same service might be connected to different providers? The latter. A right. user is having a session which is backed by a single provider. Okay, okay, thanks. <coughs> um, <coughs> which, you know, that provider could be conductor, so they still yeah, get sure. all of the pan, you know, pan provider goodness and so on. Uh, what else did I put on here? So, yeah, it'll only show what the provider actually contain, uh, provides. One of the things that we are going to be able to do, or users are going to be able to do, we hope with this, is kind of the same thing that Cloud <coughs> Conductor on, enables. The, the, you know, your, your end user consumers are going to get a, a, a nice, intuitive, lovely interface. And the administrators, will be able to change the underlying provider. So, you know, where, the, where there's a group of people who are currently using Overt and plan to adopt OpenStack, for example, we want to abstract all of that stuff from the point of view of the users. Uh, kind of like Conductor does. So that, that benefit also applies to Conductor, that abstraction. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, and the, the last point about credentials, I don't, we haven't actually engineered much at all. Okay? So we haven't solved the hard problems. But basically, you, know, you log in, you'll see from the provider what your credentials are. <coughs> are you actually logging in with your credentials for the provider? Because um, we don't have yeah. enough state to need I think, I think you should store? be able to. I think you should be able to start up a winged monkey session and say, look, here is the rev customer uh, or the VMware customer that I care about. Here yeah. are my VMware. And, and that is your login. You're logging yeah. to. And that should be sufficient. Because then you're not storing the credentials in winged monkey. Yeah. No, Likewise, no, yeah. if you're pointing to conductor, mm -hmm. I log into winged monkey with my conductor login and password. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see why you and should that be able to use it in that way. Say, so, look, here's the API for the conductor instance I care about. Here's my conductor username and password. That should be sufficient. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not also going to have a thing whereby, uh, like you talk about, a config file. So, you know, these are the providers which are accessible. Um, but in the simplest form, it should just pass through. But is there? There's no notion of a persistent user. Local to wing money. I think. Like, well, could you I'm come back and walk, on the you set up a user and password when you first. Interact with Wing Monkey, or I don't think we've actually entirely solved that problem. Okay. There, there, there are some cool things that would make sense for to do, which require user persistence in Wing Monkey. But, but also, you should just be able to say, "There's conductor. There's my conductor creds. Go." You know, so the, the problem is that no code actually exists. But I, I, end, I suspect both will end up being possible. But you know, well, is, it, is this going to be limited to just instance management? No. Where the underlying pro I can't keep caveating all the time, but in my opinion, where the underlying provider supports app forms, which is what we all call them, uh, 
And when they support app forms, that is the thing that the user should be presented with. And they should have a list of available app forms, uh -huh. and they should have a start button and a stop button which manages app forms. But where the underlying provider doesn't have this concept of a multi-instance entity, and it just has brutal images, yeah. the same list should be populated with populated. Sorry. Everybody else saw that, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> the same list should be populated with single instances. I think that you can represent either of those things in kind of the same way. List of launchable things, list of running things, start button, stop button, so it kind of doesn't yeah. matter. And what about um, image management as well? No, none of that. That's an admin task which is not done in Winged Monkey. So an admin has done all of the necessary image building, mm -hmm. catalog population, mm -hmm. all of that has happened in Conductor or wherever yeah. before this thing gets started up. So for example, if EC2 is your provider, um, when you log in to Wing Monkey, what you see as a list of images is the same thing as when you go to the EC2 native interface with yeah. those credentials yeah. and you see you the see, list. You see a bunch of all, all, you, all the public ones plus the private ones you have access exactly. to. Exactly. And my hope is that the li that list of armies can work in the user interface like a list, a catalog of, uh, of app forms. And you know, it, it's the same conceptual thing, but a list of a menu of launchable stuff. But what I also think is that in the instances where your underlying provider does deal with multi-instance entities, you shouldn't be able to dip around with the individual instances because that breaks the whole paradigm. You're dealing with what was published in the catalog, which is, you know, deployment. So, uh, so, so, so um, just to go back to your comment about supporting app forms across multiple providers, one problem you have there is that the template format is different for all of them. And so, how do you plan to handle that? Are you we're not using templates, though. We're, we're just getting a list from the provider and then picking yeah, it from that. No, and back what, 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 we need, well, what we need is some kind of catalog style thing for each provider. Or some kind of uh, you know, resource based wizard or something. Uh, which, which well, it's just a possible. list of, of, of names, really. Well, yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't really work, though, because um, you, know, you, you don't necessarily get a catalog of um, stack templates from CloudFormation. Or, um, you know, is that what you're proposing, is having a repository? In the provider somewhere, because that's not something that's necessarily natively provided. For instance, if you're going to connect to Heap, then there are templates that you can feed into Heap, but we don't provide you a list of, of pre-baked templates to launch. So, so, it's not, it's, that's so, a, so what you're saying, saying is that so Heap is sort of a lower-level thing that doesn't have, like, say, Conductor ET2, a list of built images. That are no, 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 but, but, no. We need to distinguish well, between images yeah, and, and 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 uh, this app form template thing, okay, which right, is okay. composite. So, 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 so there's no equivalent of so, yeah, the catalog of deployables in, in Heat. If if you were using Heat, with each if you were using Heat on its own rather than using Conductor after we've in integrated, yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah. Then you would need some kind of catalog management thing. But I mean, outside of Heat. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand. You yeah, know, no, no, if, you're, if right, you're right. He doesn't work. publish a catalog. That's yeah, a good yeah. point. He will well, publish a catalog when, if you address, access it via conductor. Otherwise, we're going to have to. And we have had various thoughts around the idea of wouldn't it be nice to have a catalog management application with an API that you could also exactly. connect Wing Monkey to. Yeah, and then if you can have a front end where you just have a, you can pass in parameters to those um, templates. Um, and then you don't need to care about the actual template syntax, yeah. which is, you know, quite different between the right. different implementations. But, but I mean, the logic of this application and the way that it serves a particular set of users kind of requires that you don't end up doing a whole under the hood admin. Yeah. You know, that, the, some of these problems have to be solved before your self-service user comes along and has a lovely experience. Yeah. So, so it sounds like there's some certain requirements that we have to publish as part of Wing Monkey. Say, a Wing Monkey provider must do X, Y, and Z, and yeah. example Heat is missing and, one component, and we, so we'd have to build that. Somebody would have to build that. Yeah, we can figure out how to do that, but yeah. Right. And, and, that would be out of, outside of Wing Monkey. Itself. There's been yeah. some discussion about exactly that, and um, we haven't solved all the problems, but we have come up with a name, which is obviously a half the battle. Uh, <laughs> we've been talking about the concept of monkey wings being required underlying components like a catalog management entity. You know? Um, it could just be a Git repository. Yeah, um, yeah know, it, 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 it doesn't have to be complex. Yeah. But there has to be a thing that does that role, yes. um, where, the, where the native provider does it. What are the customers, because you mentioned that there's customer demand for this. Yes. Have they seen this proposal yet? No. 
are we thinking of getting that in front of you because they have detailed requirements? Product management issue. Yeah. It's I mean, we, we, we are talking to product management about this idea and trying to make sure that we're not miles off. Yeah. But, yeah, like using the PM channel and all that stuff back and forth. So. Hugh and Mike and I spent quite a lot of time, especially Hugh, talking to PM about everything. We're doing everything that's going on. And yeah, this is one of uh, Yeah, we are trying to <coughs> keep alive. <coughs> Excuse me. So, where was I? Uh, so, core features. Now, all of this is subject to review, but in a nutshell, what we want people to be able to do is come along and list, look at a list of the stuff that they can launch, which might be app forms, might be individual images, it's provider specific, but it boils down to a list. Look at things that they would like to launch, launch things as simply as possible, look at what's currently running, see what they've got uh, associated with their credentials at any given time, stop stuff again, and see some kind of view of what they, what they have done. That's it. And the, th the thinking is that by having a sufficiently concise core mission here for what this thing is, we can do that and we can represent it in the, U in the UI in a consistent way across all of the providers that I talked about. Because many of the things, go button and stop button, should be a sufficiently high abstraction that just about anything's going to support that. <coughs> and we can focus on making it look lovely and be nice to use. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a URL which you can't quite see because of where my mouth is. Mouth? Mouse? Mm -hmm. uh, yes? Uh, you mentioned that uh, it will be mostly a step up. Yes. So for example, if I connect to Revo, uh, then uh, there is uh, different behavior when I launch an instance. For example, it goes to the stop state and I have to explicitly uh, send stack request. Does this mean that uh, if a user in BingMonkey starts a Revlon instance, it will go to stop state and he will have to do uh, another start action? No, I would have thought we will abstract out that difference and give a consistent behavior. I would go button that makes it actually you know, And if you have to do a series of whatever has to happen under the hood to make it happen, we'll abstract out and give a consistent effect. That's the theory. Now, this URL, I don't all be going off and looking at this now and not listening to me anymore, but there are a set of user stories written by me, which is to say they are fantastic, uh, which kind of break this all apart into a lot more details and have a bunch of things that Wings Monkey will, will be able to do. What we did was we split it into, and this is another fundamental concept, uh, we split the core things that you, you need to be able to do across all providers and a bunch of extended stuff which you <coughs> might be able to do based on what the provider provides. Um, so many of the things you can run, start button, stop button, things that are currently running, that's cool, like you'll get that in all circumstances. But there's all kinds of clever stuff like event notifications and uh, Min's Portlets, which we're going to let you look at um, system swap and uh, um, all that stuff that operating systems have. System load, load. that's the ambiguous term I was looking for. Uh, history, cost, quotas, all of that stuff, but that will be effectively optional in the UI. If the provider has an API, which is in progress, as we've already established, which allows Winged Monkey to show current quota usage, we will show current quota usage. If the provider doesn't have that, that just won't appear on the, on, on the screen. And so that's, that's where the split between the extended feature set and the core feature set comes in. And that means, it seems to me, that Conductor will be the most excellent provider, because it does all this clever stuff. At least it's good once we build out the API and we solve some of the problems we've been talking about so far. It's got the quotas, it's got the cost management that Martin's currently working on. Um, all of that stuff in the fullness of time will be represented in the Winged Monkey UI if you're connected to Conduct. And it just won't appear at all if you're, if you're not. 
<coughs> so, that is why I think that this is not damaging or threatening to conductors. The, the fact that we have a limited scope and the fact that we're going to represent the capabilities exploited by the front-end API for conductor, I think, means that they will actually work in harmony, rather than this being you know, a misguided attempt to re-implement conductor by, by degrees. So will this actually end up in conductor UI as part of... Well, the, no. It might end up... I can see a situation where both for the CloudForms product and for the EOS, EOS project <coughs> releases, we, we might want to say this is our user portal. Right. And we're not, going to, we're not going to take the ability to launch our app forms out of Conductor, but we're going to ship upstream, we're going, to, we, we're going to release a nice, lovely user portal which works really well and integrates really well with Conductor. And the two of them together are an EOS release, yeah. which enhance what we're doing. But we're not going to, uh, I, I, what we're not going to do is cut stuff out of conductors so much that you have to have this. You just don't need conductor for some things. Yeah, well, you, you're going to need it for all, all the admin stuff, all yep. the power, mm -hmm. the right. power aggregation, the query but, but even an end user, if I go launch something like Monkey, and then I want to I want to share that with somebody else to let somebody else see it, I've got to go to conductor to get the permissions UI to, to grant yeah. access yeah. to it. Yeah, no, ex exactly. I, would, I, I can see that in hopefully a fairly short period of time, because the scope is defined, we might say, here's a fantastic release of conductor, and here's the corresponding winged monkey for your end users. Well, and they work together yeah. really nicely. So yeah. is, the pro is, the pro is the product uh, some sort of downstream winged monkey? Winged monkey? Are we intending to productize and ship via to subscribers some version of winged monkey? Or, or are you talking about something else? Yeah, like no. I mean, portal? you know, Andy Smith talked about this the other day. Okay. Users want a nice, intuitive user form. Right. And, I just you know, was confused the platforms whether you were talking about some something with additional functionality beyond Wing Monkey. No, no. Okay. Uh, uh, but the other thing is, now this is this is where it gets interesting, I think. I've been talking about 50 minutes ago, and it gets interesting now, that's a problem. But anyway, <laughs> they might end up wanting to ship this with Rev or with OpenStack. You know, it's, it's a provider agnostic, lovely, yeah. intuitive, excellent, graphically pleasing user portal. So, you know, who wouldn't like it? This, which is the point about this being something that could do well upstream, you know? Uh, not all of those different projects have already solved this problem. So we may well get uh, OpenStack and say, oh, that's nice. And then we'll get a ton of developers from OpenStack. We could easily be in a position where there's more <coughs> development on Winged Monkey from OpenStack-minded people than there is from EOS-minded people. So long as we can yeah. contain the mission, that, that, would, that would work. Yeah? The other thing I was thinking is that one of the things we're talking about with Conductor is that we're actually moving in the direction of possibly having some future version of Conductor UI talks to the Conductor API, not directly the database. Yeah. Once we're doing that, you could think of um, Wing Monkey, the, basically Wing Monkey and Conductor UI might have a good bit of code that's really the same UI code that mm -hmm. can be shared by both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we, and it wouldn't make sense to take the ability to launch stuff out of the conductor and say you have to use this other thing for that. that that's always going to have to be there. I think there's more coaching. But, but I just mean that when, once you do that and the conductor UI is talk to conductor UI and then it goes to the conductor API and Wing Monkey does the same thing, mm -hmm. that for, for an end user <coughs> at conductor that doesn't have a bunch of extra privileges, they may well see something substantially similar to what they see in Wing Monkey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They may be running the same UI code, even, or very I mean, similar. Yeah, yeah, they may well. Or, I mean, we might get to the point where Winged Monkey has, has succeeded, and it's a cool thing, and we can deliberately kind of de-emphasize that whole end-user thing in Conductor and make it much more of a pure admin tool because Winged Monkey has got that cover. Or you might have but Conductor UI including Winged Monkey as one of its components. Yeah, yeah, that would also work. I mean, the, these are problems we don't have to solve now, but you know, in, in theory, if all, all of those are, are possible. So, I was going to show you at this point some mock some mock up designs that Jeremy Perry, who unfortunately is not with us, did, which kind of capture some of what is that one? Oh, come on now. 
There we go. Right, I'm going to go through this quite quickly because they're not my work and I don't, I can't represent them as well as Jeremy did, but he did some mock-ups of what the UI might look like, which kind of goes some way to focus on the core purpose. So, you log into Inbunky and you see you, you haven't got anything running, <coughs> nice big launch button. And basically, this is going to go through the workflow of getting, getting a thing launched and having it's been running. So, the thing to bear in mind here is this is imagining that we are connected, I think, to Conductor, and it's after we've finished all of our API work, and we've got all the bells and whistles turning up in the Wee Monkey UI. There's a ton of stuff here which would not necessarily appear based on. Uh, you know, what the provider provides. So, I mean, well, I'm not going to get back into cost, but there's a, there's a ton of reasons why that cost is hard to fill at this point, but that's not the point. If the underlying provider offers that, then we'll do it. But you've got this menu of logical things that I was talking about, with some degree of metadata that allows it to be represented to the user in a hopefully fairly clear way. If the provider allows you to get to see which things have been recently updated, and so on, then we'll rep represent that as well. And then let people know the things they launch most frequently, the things which have been updated, and so on. All of this cleverness would degrade fairly elegantly based on what's actually possible. You know, so as the, 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 the list will be there, but a lot of the cleverness might not based on what the um, provider provides. And then you launch something. Now there's going to have to be some kind of provider specific next step after you hit launch, because different providers obviously you know, take launch time parameters, in the case of heat and conductor or, or whatever they do, require you to specify a disk size or don't, don't you know, and so on. So some degree of launch time parameter specification, which will depend on the provider and if the provider's conductor, then basically we let people know what their kind of quota usage and represent cost as well. <laughs> well, that more or less speaks for itself. Let this thing, let people know that a thing has been launched and shown in status. If you switch to a view of the application, so representation of an application. Now, when we have solved all of these stateful instance problems that Scott was talking to us about yesterday, it will then become possible to have all of these lovely buttons appear here. Take a snapshot of the instance, clone the thing, pause it, stop it, etc. Uh, again, those. Those, in, those controls will be stripped down based on what the actual uh, capabilities of the provider are. Uh, I'm not to think of anything else to say about that. It speaks for itself. Okay, very well. You can see what that is. Can I add something? Yeah. Um, so this is an example of a conductor workflow. So in this workflow, um, you're, you're not selecting the pool or the, re the resource zone. But yeah, so I, the, the thinking on that is that when the user connects to Conductor, they're going to have to pick a pool, have it picked for them or whatever, but they're going to have to be using Wings Monkey, not just in the, con on the, in the context of a Conductor <coughs> instance, but in the context of a pool. So what you were saying before, so when the user logs in, um, see he puts in the credentials for whatever, he, uh, for whatever uh, provider he ends up using, so in that in that provider selection, instead of saying conductor, would it be like conductor pool. Yes. Okay. I don't know how that's going to happen, but yes, there'll be some magic, and they will be basically operating in the context of a single pool. Again, that's that's, that's, that's the UI. It's going to be there. 
I beg your pardon? That, that, that also falls into the category of someone's going to kind of provide a specific UI. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least getting you started. In Conductor, you don't specify a hardware profile because that's built into the, yeah. the, the, the blueprint or whatever. Yeah. But in EC2, you do. Yeah, the launch time stuff, you, you will have to be provided specific. And, and in terms of getting you started, when you're talking to Conductor, you're going to have to pick a call. So, yeah. so is it. Is there going to be some notion of an administrator saying on Bing Monkey so that the user can select among the pools, or is this the user going to be has that the user for pools. is that Bing Monkey knows it knows about this conductor instance and so it's getting a list of pools like that? Yeah, one of those. Well, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, you're logging in to conductor as the user, so that can, so conductor can tell you what pools that user has permission to launch. Yeah, exactly, in. exactly. But if the user has permission to access. Five pools, either five, by you default, one. by the admin, or by giving the user a list, we're going to have to narrow it down to one. Because yeah. you know, quotas and catalogs and all that stuff make sense in the pool. I just think you know, one of those options might be more complicated in terms of you're going to start getting a lot of diverging workflows <coughs> for, for each provider. I don't know. The, uh, well, there's logging in. If you're logging into Conductor, you have to pick a pool. That's true. Once you're logged in, that goes away. And the other point where there is provider specific stuff is after you click the launch button and you have to either specify hardware profile or give launch time parameters or not do that because the provider doesn't take them or whatever. So there's going to have to be a view there which is provider specific. But uh, I mean, the login thing, however we solve the problem of picking a pool, it's only a one time getting started problem. It's not, it's not, going, to impede, it's not going to impinge on people's use of the thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Um, so, I don't know if there's a lot else I wanted to show you here. Jeremy was describing how we could get event notification. Um, so, yeah, once your application is running, the ability to go back to the view we had a moment ago where you see the details about an, uh, an application. An alerting system, obviously that's a whole can of worms about how we want to know if they're pending alerts and so on, the API that that's only a question of implementation. Um, but yeah, a, a, a list of your currently running app forms, as we are required to call them. And now, this, see this, <coughs> right here, is it? One of the things that we thought it would be really cool to be able to do, which is possibly on the next page, is have a fix my application button, which basically depends on heat. Well, the HA stuff, which is in heat, yeah. where it detects that it, it, it detects that instances have failed and there are scripts which manage the auto restarting of services uh, and, and so on. If heat is in play, either way, in, 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 itself or as an embedded component of the conductor, then you can have a fix my application button, it seems to us. Assume the application has been written correctly to use it, which is a whole lot of camera. Work. But you know, where the where the capability exists to respond to a problem by respawning instances, um, so, so that kind of stuff is baked into the template um, as a configurable resource in the template. So what you could have is um, several template types and then parameters that you pass in which specify whether the instances are going to have, you know, uh, HA or scaling capabilities. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it would entirely depend on all of that having been done before the user comes along. Yeah. Somebody having created the template which has all this stuff in it. But you know, assuming, assuming somebody's done the work before the <coughs> monkey gets fired up, um, yeah, that's one of the things we, we could do. Now, bear with me, I just want to jump back to the slides because I'm having a minor technical challenge. No, that's not what I want. Right. So, at the moment, it is not intended that. Uh, Winged Monkey is going to start off by integrating Delta Cloud as its means of accessing these different providers. I can do no more than this than to paraphrase what uh, Greg Blomquist, who's doing a lot of the sort of technical lead on, on this thing so far, had to say on the subject, which is that it's probably overkill at the moment, at this stage in development, to pull in Delta Cloud. So that's not what's currently happening. However, 
the, and I mean Minda's about this as well, the, the management of multiple providers is being encapsulated to a point where it would be possible to swap in Delta Cloud at a later stage. Um, it, it's, not, it, it's not a question of having definitively decided not to use Delta Cloud, it's, it's not integrated in the, in the you know, in, in the very beginning. I don't fully follow how it's overkill to use something that exists rather than reinventing it. <laughs> and if you know, that's a series of rules and things. Okay. Fair enough. So, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn between saying, well, I'm not going to try and sell this idea to you because I'm already probably getting boss and trying to actually sell this idea to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with four. <laughs> well, the, 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 the thing is, there's, there's very little code of any type at this point, yeah. and everything that exists in, in, well, in, in, Yeah, I, I don't mean now, I just mean down the road. Yeah. Well, it, no, it seems uh, like not a choice. No, but, well, I, I don't think the choice has been made down the road, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the very initial fledgling code is encapsulating and sort of separating off the provider interface. Um, and is, but it's not building yeah. on a Delta Cloud right now, we could. And okay. you know, maybe it will. Yeah. And so I we're not gonna, saying we're not using it. No, no, yeah. absolutely and, not. And I was going to say, you know, one of these, one of these, you know, since you're going to have one of these plug into engines for each you know, back end, whether it's conductor, or, you know, RV over or whatever, over it, but you might build one of these engines or plugins for Delta Cloud. Yeah. Once you do that, you can then support all the providers of Delta Cloud supports without any wing monkey specific code. Yeah. So, to yeah, that's exactly right. So I, I, I kind of put this in because I, I, I was anticipating it would come up as a question. It isn't a que it, it's not that a fundamental decision has been made not to use Delta Cloud. It's more that today no. the code that, that Greg has been doing largely yeah. isn't built on Delta Cloud. Uh, uh, and is that at the moment? Yeah. The other thing I would imagine is maybe he wants to include features that RBO provides that Delta Cloud does not. So yeah. this gives you the then you can custom, especially if you're going to bundle this with with um, with um, RevM as you know a portal for it, you're going to want <coughs> features that aren't in Delta Cloud. Yeah. Now, uh, the other thing is, no, I think I've slightly. I think we use the RB over in Delta Cloud. Get right, but but because but you but, that sure, but but again, Delta Cloud is kind of a, a subset of what you could get the RB no, over. We use like for 100 percent of what RB okay. provides. So this next slide, the the first point in here also applies in the question of integrated Delta Cloud. If you uh, imagine yourself as a contributor uh, to Winged Monkey, someone whose allegiance and emotional attachment is to Winged Monkey rather than to Delta Cloud or to Conductor or whatever, the fact that you can just start up Winged Monkey and point it straight at yeah. vSphere with no intervening stuff is a feature. Yeah. It makes it more flexible and more reusable and it makes it fit a better range of use cases. Yeah. So there's a, there is an argument in the interest of making Winged Monkey attractive, to have a few dependencies. Yeah. Anyway, I, like to, it, it, I, I kind of put that in there because I, I suspect yeah. it would be out, but it's not like a definitive decision yeah. to be made. Back to the same thing, you know, you say, you know, it, it might, you know, it's just as easy to use RB over it as Delta Cloud, and you could reverse that and say, well, it's just as easy to use Delta Cloud as RB over it, and yeah. they're aside from the dependency issue. Yeah, but. it would, I mean, you know, people are interested, you should probably take it up with Greg, actually. Much better handle all this stuff than I do, but maybe know where we are. So, uh, why don't we just make Conductor more lovely and meet this need? Partly because the thing that he was talking about of trying to make some of our work more consumable upstream and more likely to succeed upstream, and for the reasons we talked about, we think that this is a standalone, discrete project which could get contributions from all different sources. And also because it it feels like it makes sense to have a light project and implement uh, an application that doesn't come with a ton of dependencies. Conductor, because it does so many clever things, is not light. And it's not easy to deploy and not easy to get into a distribution and all of that stuff because it's big, as we've already discussed. You don't have to carry all of that stuff to solve the core mission of what Wing Monkey is trying to hit. Ah, uh, I don't think I need to say anything about this. We already covered this. We will represent a resource zone, uh, actually what we used to call a core in the old days, 
um, as a provider. This doesn't require that we take anything out of the conductor. We still need to be able to launch stuff in the conductor, and we don't want to get into a position where the conductor doesn't work without the wind working. You know, we, we, that they both need to be viable, standalone things. So we're not going to aggressively descope and carp stuff out of the conductor. Um, well, I say we're not going to. You guys might decide that you do want to in a year's time because wind working is so lovely. But for now, we're not. The intention is not that we, you know, cripple conductor or make it only actually work as part of the pair. Um, so it's all about achievable goals, seems to me. The nice thing about uh, that is attractive about wind monkey is that we've got a specific scope. We want to solve a specific set of problems, and we've got you know, limited things and a number of things that we want to do. So, I believe that it shouldn't be more than months before Winged Monkey is kind of finished, you know? We've got a beautiful intuitive user interface that does the things I already talked about. We might add in a little extra tweak when Conductor finally has a cost API which does everything we want it to. You know, we might play around around the edges and add in some extra features, but it's basically going to be done. We might also add support for another provider under the hood, but that's just a new plugin. Effectively. We're starting with Revin, though, as the provider? Because we don't have the connector API complete yet? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that is true. Over. That, uh, we do, this does depend, the success of this whole thing does depend on the API work we already talked about actually. Sure. Because yeah. this is going to be a consumer right. of the API, which is no way the conductor will benefit because we'll be in a situation where we'll at least have the command line tools of Winged Monkey as two different things which exercise the conductor. Uh, so yeah, achievable goals, limited scope. Hopefully we can get to the point where we are done before very much, before very long. So in terms of what is happening, there's, there's the project on GitHub which has got the user stories. There is some code at this point um, and some design and so on. Greg Blomquist is, is basically the tech lead on this. He's doing all the hard thinking. And a lot of what I've been saying to you has been channeling what he has to say on the subject. But, uh, so Greg is trying to solve his provider access problem. And I know that Min's been talking to him about that somewhat and trying to solve some of the problems there. We decided to rationalize and only allow people whose name starts with a J to work on the UI, which will pay off in the long run. <laughs> so Jeremy Perry uh, did the mock-ups that I showed you a little while ago. I know uh, Jeremy has looked at this more than once and spoken to Jeremy and had some input. And Yerke has been starting to think about using Converge UI and actually making some of this stuff fly. And I've been hassling Mike about <coughs> the Conductor API plans and trying to articulate what it is that the Winged Monkey UI is going to need out of the Conductor API and trying to feed that into what turns up in the sprint plans and so on. So do we already have a clear set of API requirements? We have an unclear list. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's, I'll, I'll, there is a list which I will send you, but it's yeah. not like everything. It's a work in progress. But, but yeah, we have a list. I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Any slide? Let me see. You might surprise myself. No, I didn't. I'm not going to surprise myself. That was why I threw it up. So that's it. In a nutshell, that is the plan, and it's in its early stages. Uh, like I said, Greg, who unfortunately is not here, you've got a better pitch out of him, I think, than out of me in a lot of ways. Greg is starting to actually make this happen along with the other people named there. But like everything, we're trying to spin this off as, a, as an upstream project. So anybody who wants to and is interested should get on the developer list and you know, pull the code out of Git and, and you know, start thinking about it and joining in. Questions? Yeah, just a technical about the inventing Delta Cloud. Uh, I'm afraid that it might end uh, by uh, re-implementing uh, Foco Embedded, if you want this. Well, maybe you I, can start with, with this library instead of mm -hmm. implementing launch and stop actions for each of them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, you know, I the people who are working on this, are aware of that danger and aware of what looks like on the face of it like an opportunity to save a load of time by reusing something else. 
I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. It's, it, I'm not going to be the one writing the code, so. Um, speak to Greg. Yeah, of course, speak, speak to me. The question uh, that pops up uh, in, in my mind is uh, whether you would even consider no, uh, not using Rata Cloud if, if it was a library. Because yeah. the argument you said uh, was, uh, seemed to me like you don't want to have it too complicated uh, in, in terms, terms of dependencies. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not trying to criticize the Delta Cloud. The, the easier it was to implement and to pick up and use would help. But at this point, Wing Monkey's got some very simple goals. We want to be able to connect to a provider and, and launch a thing. You don't actually need Delta Cloud at this point. But you know, the encapsulation of the provider access will make it easy to reach the point where we do need Delta Cloud or FOD or whatever it might be. It's not the first problem we have to solve, it's kind of where we are. You know, I think that you don't want to use Delta Cloud because uh, it abstracts all the uh, extended features. Well, that's the other thing. I, I think you would, get it, you would get into a position where potentially you're either using Delta Cloud and making native calls because we want to do some of the fancy stuff that turns up on screen, or you end up where you're using Delta Cloud and you want the fancy stuff, so we end up with all the people who are actually trying to grow with the monkey being worked Delta Cloud for because they're adding a feature there, which is, would not be a bad thing, but does Delta Cloud actually want to go the same way as we would like? It's all, it, 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 it's, it, yeah. it's not a problem that needs to be solved now, it's really. It, it, this isn't a, quest, but a case of having made a policy decision to never use Delta Cloud. It's just, it's not the most pressing issue to solve. And the full library, is it like uh, Delta Cloud in terms of abstracting out the differences, or is it just a bunch of libraries that talks to the providers? So I don't know, but the data abstraction sucks. Yes. So, yeah. so maybe, maybe the point sucks is actually good for, for this project. I don't think so. Like the Foreman, I think, is using Fog for for the, this stuff, and they're considering also switching something better, because they found this small abstraction box that uh, Fog had. So yeah, uh, FOG doesn't do very much in the end. Yeah. Delta Cloud is a much more complete. Well, we, we, yeah, we are very strong in abstraction, so uh, the drivers are very consistent. In FOG, the, the methods are not very consistent. They, they have a different name. So we mainly bench of pencils to, co to connect to various providers and uh, not, not focusing on the abstraction. Yeah, and uh, FOG is focusing on the feature support, so they support the as much as feature today. So this yeah. sounds ex exactly as so well. Well, the ring monkey needs. Yeah, the ring monkey. Well, they could use Delta called the fog. No problem. Yeah, that would make sense to, to use use Delta Cloud for us. That, that that's common for all and yeah. and for those special things that are extra. Okay. So is any anything else on any of this stuff? All right then. That's the winged monkey. Don't say nobody told you. It's not quite you got a clap on this. Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs>